the minute before we get going here, but we're right on time. So I'm super excited to get going on this LinkedIn Live. I have a ton of stuff to share with you guys. Uh, if you have any questions or anything, I'll do my best to uh, check the comments on Jake's side and as well as share a bunch of stuff with you. I'm gonna be sharing my screen for most of this uh, 30 minutes. So, all right, well, listen, if you guys have never seen my face before, and I'm obviously not Jake, if you're expecting to see Jake today, my name is Brian Masseri, and I'm the LinkedIn strategist over at Scaled. Um, hopefully all of y'all had a great time last night watching the uh, game. If uh, your team won, feel free to throw it in the chat. Would love to hear um, you know, how it went for you last night. Jake's a huge uh, Kansas City fan. You probably already know that. And so uh, he's obviously probably in a great mood after yesterday's game. Okay, so here's what I would like to do today. I would love to share with you guys some AI tools that I feel like are gonna be super, super valuable to you going forward in the um going forward in sales and talking about you know um you know lead generation but i want to make sure also you see these as tools like i'm going to show you a lot of stuff today that's also super valuable that you know look may not even necessarily be about lead generation that could be used for your day-to-day -day. really the way i look at ai as i've looked at it you know really really um focused over the last 30 days of doing this this pro this um I've been posting on LinkedIn for 30 days is really looking at AI as a way to make you more efficient. It's not there to, I don't believe, to really replace any one single job or person. I think it's really just about how can you take your talents, sort of not have to do some of the stuff that's repeatable, uh, repetitive that we've had to do in the past for our jobs, and then really allow you to take your time to be super competitive and effective with these AI tools. So that's what I want to jump in today for. Hey, Robert, glad you're here. You're always a, a, a real buddy and um, a partner, and I appreciate it, man. I appreciate you being here. If you have any questions as I'm going along about what are these tools or you want a link or anything like that, let me know, and I'll be sure to try to get this into the chat for you guys as we go along. But with that said, what I'd like to do is kick things off by sharing my screen. So just give me a second here. All right, let me just check the uh, the live stream to make sure we're good on that side as well. One second, there's a little bit of a delay here. I wanna make sure you guys can see the screen okay. Come on, there we go, okay. Just wanted to make sure that it was looking right on the live stream. Okay, so where you can see right now, and you can see I have a ton of tabs open here at the top, and if you can't, I'll, I'll go through them here. Um, so I have a ton to show you over the next 30 minutes, um, but what I wanted to start with was the one that I think everybody's the most familiar with, and that's ChatGPT. So if you're, if you're sort of new to this and you don't really know what ChatGPT is, or maybe you've just heard it, but you haven't really, you know, spent any time with it. This is what it looks like. It's, it's nothing super fancy. All the fanciness is on the back, the back end as well. Uh, yeah, Robert, I do have ChatGPT plus. Basically the plus just means that as of this morning, I went ahead and paid the uh, $20 a month. And that's just essentially ChatGPT has been used so much, like millions and millions of times a day, I think, that they came out with a tiered paid program that's allow, uh, enabling you to be able to um, not have it crash on you or be overburdened and stuff. It's supposed to give you better access to it. And of course, since I was doing this live today, I didn't want to have any issues with it not working if we tried any live features along the way. So I went ahead and did that. And I think I'll keep that on. Honestly, for now, $20 a month is a, is a you know, is an easy, easy sell for me for how valuable ChatGPT is. But this is what most people are seeing. I was saying at the beginning, if you don't know what it is, it's essentially a chat bot. That's really, really dumbing it down. And why did this become such a big deal? Because honestly, the infrastructure behind this has existed for a year. In fact, you can go on YouTube and look at YouTube videos that are about a year old where people are talking about the OpenAI playground. OpenAI is the company that created ChatGPT. So the GPT 2.0 and now 3.0 and soon in this year we'll have 4.0, not to get into the weeds technical on that. Um, that's the, the infrastructure, if you will, that's the technology that this is all built off of and it's getting smarter and smarter as we go. But this has been around for a year. 
funny enough, the owner of uh, OpenAI kind of said, we were kind of waiting for people to build this AI and built this GPT, this, this chat GPT, and nobody did, so we built it ourselves. So that's that happened like around November of last year, and that's when all of a sudden everybody went nuts. I remember the first day I used it, and I was like, oh, this is not just a bot. It's been really, really highly trained, and it's been like enforced with humans. So basically a lot of the stuff you're seeing on here, it's still in that a lot of it is beta. And so you have a lot of that human interaction saying, yeah, this is a good result. No, this isn't. So it's a it's a data model, it's a model, but it's been trained and backed up by a human and that's why it's so good. Okay, so this is what you're seeing is just this free, you know, like you're seeing a blank screen here. But what I'll say is that, you know, somebody, the CEO of, of ThoughtSpot, which is a data analytics company said this to me one time and he said, Hey, you know what we found out with what we were trying to create, because essentially they were trying to create this, if you will, this kind of screen, but for data analytics, aka like, hey, I need an executive dashboard filled with KPIs and gauges and all that stuff, and I just want to ask for it. So I type it in and I ask for whatever that is. Show me um, a, a chart that compares this year to last year, fiscal, whatever, you get it, right? And then boom, it would it would create the chart. It's amazing, it's an amazing technology. But he said what they found out after deploying that was that most people were scared by this guy right here, this blinking bar. Because most of you, if you have played with ChatGPT at this point, have probably typed in something silly, like write me an Eminem rap about sales, and it will, it'll give you its best shot at it. You're like, oh, that's pretty fun. But that doesn't really move the needle, That that's, you may be amazed by it, but if you're in sales, if you're trying to use this tool to be more efficient, if specifically if you're talking about lead generation and, and trying to learn more and be hyper personalized about the, the customers that you're going after, well, then how do we do that? So that's what I want to dig in today. I don't want to just talk about, oh, look at a couple of cool things you can you can type into the space bar and, you know, we can get all these different answers. I want to show you some stuff you guys can walk away with at the end of this 30 minutes. And we're not going to talk about just ChatGPT, chat GPT. I've got a couple other um, uh, tools, AI tools I want to show you as well. Um, one called Merlin, another one called Glass. Uh, content at scale is amazing. I just did a post about that today. That's going to blow you away. Um, and then we got another one here, Taplio, which is also pretty awesome. And we're going to get to all of that in the next 23 minutes or so. So it's going to be uh, fast and furious, but we're going to move it along. Again, if you have any comments, throw them in the chat on, uh, on LinkedIn, and I'll do my best to answer them as we go. But let's dive in. Let's get into the good stuff. Okay. Yeah, say that three times fast. I trip up over that all the time, Robert. Robert's saying, saying chat GPT three times fast. I wish there was a easier way to say it because I trip over it all the time. So, okay, so let's get into the first one that I think you guys are gonna find a lot of value in. So this could be really any particular topic that you're, um, that you're interested in. So I'm going to just say for this one, we could, we could be anything, but write 10 unique topics about building a winning RevOps team once a company is ready for go to market, to go to market, okay? What am I trying to do here? In this particular case, in this use case, if I was trying to create a content calendar, if I was trying to decide if I was going to go onto LinkedIn, if I was going to create YouTube videos, if I was going to any sort of content, blogs really even, and I wanted to figure out, hey, how could I get really good ideas to go create content about? Because as a LinkedIn strategist, one of the things I deal with all the time with our sales teams that I train is, that's great, Brian, where do I start? And I'm like, look, the stuff up here in your head is pretty amazing. So let's just start with what you know, and then we can create content off that because that's the really good stuff, the personal stories. But how do you get started? Well, here's one way you can do it. You first, you start by asking ChatGPT for 10 unique topics. So boom, it gave me 10 topics on here. And then just you guys can kind of read along these if you want, or watch the replay later and kind of dig into them if you want. But what I want to get to is after I had these 10 topics, the next thing I say is write three unique questions for each topic, one through 10, numbering them with bullet points. Funny enough, it didn't use bullet points this time. The first time I ever did it, it did. So it just used um, like it's doing a, a um, the sub bullets on it with instead of the bullets, it does the, the lowercase i's or, or the, uh, yeah, the lowercase i's on it. We'll move on from that. I can't think of the word I want. And so now what it did is it took this first result from here, exactly the same. And now it's given me three questions underneath that. So boom, now we've taken our 10 ideas, our 10 topics, and we've created 30 questions. And so boom, it keeps going and going and going and going and going. In fact, you're gonna even see that after nine, it kind of just stopped. And that happens sometimes. It's like, oh, I'm tired, I'm done. 
and you just type in continue and it's like yeah oh, okay i woke back up and it'll keep going for you i don't know if that's built in on purpose because you know there's been so much load on the system that after a certain point it's like there's a timeout almost but i think it's funny and if you write continue it'll keep on going then it, it had the last bullet here of sub bullet of nine and then had uh three more for 10 and that gives us our 30. okay great now we have 30 questions that going back to our original topic about writing 10 unique topics to build about building a winning RevOps team once a company is ready to go to market. That's our topic. Okay, so now we're at the bottom here, but we can go farther. So now let's say I need to put this into a Google Sheet because I want to be able to track it. I want to be able to decide and mix and match a little bit. So now I go to create me a table with the following columns, date, topic, question. So date, topic, question, fill it in with the previous response. So this is a great reminder that with it to a certain extent, ChatGPT is is pulling from the previous parts of the thread. So this is one new chat, if you will. OK, if I didn't want ChatGPT to know or 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 use the previous information, if I was changing the topic or something like that, what you would want to do is just start a new chat. You can also type in like forget everything before this, but truthfully, it's just easier to go to new chat on there. So what it's doing is it's filling in from previous response. I don't have to tell it this again. It already knows it's there. So now what we have is an entire um, an entire spreadsheet, if you will, or you know, table is what I want to say. And you can see I kind of messed up here. I said date here, and it's like, yeah, cool. Today's two thirteen. Got it. And it put the date in every single one of it. Probably what I should have said is like date number one to 30, or I should have said date parentheses like February, and it might have done February one, two, three, but I didn't want to reload it for the sake of this uh, example. So now what we have is a, something we can copy and paste if we want to, but we don't even have to stop here. Check this out. So now if you look all the way up here, here's the question, the first question of the first uh, topic. What are three key responsibilities of a RevOps team and how do they differ from traditional sales, marketing, and customer success roles? So ideally what you would be doing at this place is like going, okay, I'm an expert in this. I'm, I'm trying to write about this, put out new content. What do I know about this? And now I know what I can go create a, a blog about. I can go create a LinkedIn post about. Maybe I even want to do a video, oh, but I'm not really good at video. How, what would be some good ideas in order to create a short, quick video for like a TikTok or YouTube or even just LinkedIn? LinkedIn, Okay, write a 30 second video transcript that answers the following question and I copy and pasted it in there. And you can see it actually is pretty cool. Intro music and animation, <laughs> voiceover. Have you ever heard of RevOps? It's the newest buzzword in the world of sales and marketing. Okay, cut to visual of person speaking to the camera. So then I, would, I would, after I did my overdub, and then here's all the cool stuff I can say. And now here's back to the animation and music with my outro and music and animation. Pretty cool. I mean, if you've never done a video before, this basically just told you exactly what to talk about. You can even turn it into an actual transcript if you were just trying to read off of it. So that's interesting. It's telling me to use some animations and video. Hey, what would be some good animation or images to use for this video? See, I mean, you can, it's, it's truly a chat experience. So you can keep talking back to it and going, how would I do this? How would I do this? And you dive in a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper. I would say it's a little like the movie Inception. How many layers deep can we go? The first, the, the first side, probably not going to be super usable to you, but how quickly can you follow up with these follow up questions and get really, really actionable, usable information that you can quickly then turn into content if you wanted to, or in a DM for LinkedIn or in cold email sequences or any of the above. So this is a really, really good example of how you can do this. Okay, we're going to move on to a couple of the chat PT and then we're going to move on to some other stuff. This is another example and I want to give credit really quick to this guy right here, Justin's AI newsletter, and his last name is Feinberg, I believe. Uh, check that out, yeah, just, justinfeinberg.com. You can check this out, I just wanna make sure I'm giving him you know, credit where credit is due because he's the one that talked about this prompt. But I wanna show you how cool it is real quick and we won't dive too deep into it. If you don't know what to do in ChatGPT, you can actually say, hey, I need help with creating a prompt, AKA the thing that you're gonna type in to get the result that you want. Prompt engineering, which is sort of what this is, is, probably the hardest thing to do because like I said a blinking blank bar is tough but if you have some help along the way that can be super helpful so here you have your prompt generating uh generation robot this is what Justin put in basically it's saying you're going to create a great prompt for me but I need you to ask me questions to make it great so then it's like sure I'd be happy to and I'm like and it's asking me about my goals for this particular prompt 
And then I give it that. And it's like, great for your girl, uh, your goal for creating content calendar about tools and so and so on. A list would be a good, a good example. And then we go back and forth in this discussion. He keeps asking me questions. I keep providing it more information. And then as we get down to the bottom, is there anything else I can add to the prompt? And I'm like, no, it's like, okay, got it. Here's the final prompt based on your requirements. Boom. Now I have everything I need. So now look, I can just go to a new chat and I type in this I copy and paste this prompt in. Here's a sample content calendar for the AA tools you mentioned. That's what we were talking. Me, me and ChatGPT were having a conversation back and forth. I, it gave me the best prompt it could, it could come up with. Then I use that prompt to get the best result I could get out of it. So even if you don't necessarily know how to use ChatGPT, you don't know where to start. Here's two good examples of how you can just start naturally asking questions and get better and better responses. And I think these are both really great examples. Okay, let's see, how are we doing? All right, I don't see any particular questions coming up just yet, so I'm gonna keep moving on. So another great <clears throat> example of this is something called uh, content at scale. Now that's different. It's an AI tool, but it's different than ChatGPT. I want to show it to you really quickly, though. Even though you may not be thinking of this as about lead generation, I just wrote a blog. I mean, this is literally my morning's blog on this. So I highly recommend going over to my um, post today. And by the way, the entire series I did is called AI Brains and Gains or hashtag AI Brains and Gains. So you can see all the 29 posts. I have one more to do about AI and in sales. But this is called content at scale. And I'll make sure that I put the... Um, let me just go grab it right now. I'm going to put this in the chat. So you guys have it if you want to check it out. It's coming up as Jake. That's that's me doing it. I'm, I'm on Jake's account here. But content at scale. Let me just tell you what I did. This tool created a 2500 plus word blog in less than five minutes. It is SEO rich. It's optimized to make sure that it ranks on Google. It's full of amazing information. It does not get detected by the AI content detectors that are out there. And frankly, it's amazing. I mean, it's amazing. So I wanted to show it to you because this is such an amazing tool. And the way I look at it is it can help you create all sorts of content or dive deep for a particular client. Like I was saying in the email today or the uh, video I did today on my uh, LinkedIn post, you could even use this. Yeah, it could create blogs, but it could also create LinkedIn long form content, maybe an article that you want to write on LinkedIn. Maybe you have this target account that you really want to go after, but maybe five, six, seven of you on your team are going to go deep on this particular account. And so, hey, if they're looking into you as you start to reach out, they may go to your website. Wouldn't it be great if maybe there was a blog or an article or a LinkedIn post that felt just in time, like it was speaking just to them? You could also use it for that. But for this example, I just used a, an example of, I used to own a, a nutrition company with my wife and it was catered towards, it was nutrition plans, it was catered towards CrossFitters because we used to own a CrossFit gym before that. So I said, okay, if this was 2015 and I had to write a blog, which by the way, I was trying to do daily and beating my head against the wall trying to do it. How would this tool help me out? Guys, the URL slug, the meta description, it gave me an example for a photo to put at the top. This is, <laughs> this is the blog it created in less than five minutes. Table of contents, everything you could possibly do. Key takeaways. This is a plugin. You have a plugin here that'll go directly to your WordPress site if you want. Then, like, click to tweet different things you can put in. Look how amazing this is. Now, would I send this live the way it is? No, I'd probably spend another another hour tweaking it, pulling out some of the redundancies and things like that. But you can see over here on the screen, it's optimization. So basically, it's saying these are the words you want to have that are keywords that you want to rank for. You want to know where it was pulling information from, not plagiarizing, but where it was pulling the best ideas from all the stuff that's already ranking on Google. So you can see all the other blogs that it was pulling ideas from. And then review to see if there's any plagiarism or whatever, 0% there. I already put it into the AI detector, content detector. It came up as 99.7% human uh, created. This tool is is amazing. So I don't want to spend too much time on it, but I want to let you know about it. I put the um, the link in the comments if you want to go check it out. It's content at scale. Amazing tool. All right. We've got about 10 more minutes. Let's move on. I got a few more things to share with you guys. And then I can always circle back to any one particular one of these. Okay. So let's say you are trying to sell something into Scaled. So Jake's the CEO of Scaled. I'm, uh, I'm hijacking his uh, LinkedIn today. But if we were trying to sell to Jake, how might we do that? 
Well, one of the things you may come across as you're as you're prospecting and, and sort of trying to dive deep and you know maybe understand what Jake is is talking about or what could you put in an email or whatever you come across a podcast. Well, this podcast also happens to be on YouTube, like a lot of them are today. Usually podcasts typically have a video um, uh, element to them, or at least a lot of them do. So let's just say you have this podcast, but it's 34 minutes. You'd like to be able to send out an email to Jake in the next three or four minutes, not watch a 34 minute video first, and then be able to go over and send that pers highly personalized email to him. Okay, how are we gonna do this? Well, what you can see, for this um, add-on, it's a uh, Chrome add-on called GLASP, G-L-A-S-P, GLASP. And what it does is it allows you to get a full transcript and summary of this entire 34 minutes. Boom, done. Literally the entire transcript. Okay, so now that we have that, what can we do with it? Well, we could probably do a lot with it. We could pull out little clips. Hey, Jake, I really liked when you said this thing or that thing. You could do that right from here. But you could also click this button here, and it's going to take it right into chat GPT. It automatically opens it up in another screen. So then it basically what it's done for you is it already says summarize the following title and guess what this is the entire transcript all the way down all 34 minutes of it. And at the very end here, it basically says go ahead and give me a summary of this so summarize the video and then it goes and says here the modern outbound playbook is a YouTube video featuring Jake so on and so forth. Jake believes that the status quo of sales leadership, which has been around for 15, 20 years, needs to change and that companies should interact with their buyers in a more efficient and effective manner. So if I was going to now prospect to Jake, I might be using words but like efficient and effective manner or words like that, because clearly it matters to Jake. Now, maybe it matters because of what we're doing at scale when he's talking about the sales process, but also we can take from this that being successful salesperson is understanding human behavior. So if I have another product, let's say it's an HR product or something, and I'm just trying to sell into scale that I'm like, hey, I think you could use, you. I see that you guys are growing, you guys could really use this tool. It will help your team be more efficient and effective. And it really takes in the human behaviors and so to see where this is going. So this can be super, super, super helpful in order to take what is 34 minutes of a, of a podcast distill it down very quickly. And I could even actually continue to ask questions here as you saw me do earlier. So uh, I could ask questions like, you know, could you give me three follow-up questions add, or I could simply ask it to write me a cold email, I suppose, and see what I get out of that. So a lot, a lot of really good um, insights can be gleaned from something that would take you normally in the, in the past much, much, much longer to uh, watch and then watch on two times speed and try to write down notes this this takes 30 seconds and you're already off to the races and now i can send a very personalized message to jake using some of these keywords that he's used before and now i have probably a better chance of him opening up that email in fact i might even use tools like a lavender or something like that and decide that i want to put in you know efficient and effective something something like that human in the subject line to try to see if i can get jake to open it being the ceo of this company really really cool i love this uh particular one I think we did this again. My wife actually used this. Um, so you can see just a different example. Same thing. It was a YouTube video. Um, she's a dietitian, as I told you. And then we got a summary. And then here you go. What are three topics to discuss with nutrition students based off this transcript? Because I was just showing this to my wife and she's, she deals with interns as a dietetic director for the uh, state. So there you go. Some more questions that she could have pulled up. And then could you go into more detail about the phase transitions and how they can be used to understand the molecular structure of chocolate? Guys, this is this is above my head now, but now it goes boom and it's given her more and more and more. So now this gives my wife talking points to bring up with her students about this particular video. Again, from a video to summary to getting detailed questions that she can now bring up and triggers her with all of her expertise and her, and her amazingness of how to be a dietitian because she's phenomenal. Uh, being able to talk to our students. So I think this is a really, really cool, cool tool as well. Okay, let's hit one or two more and then we're gonna be out of time. But like I said, fast and furious with all these tools. The next one I wanna show you, it's called Taplio. 
not free. Tap leaders not free. By the way, content at scale is not free either, but go watch my post from today. And, and I did about a seven minute, eight minute video deep dive into it that will give you everything you need to know about it. Taplio is another cool tool. It's there to help you write content. So if you're struggling, you know, I deal with everybody, like I said, with LinkedIn strategy, a lot, obviously the biggest barrier to overcome is just getting that first post out the door, figuring out how you're going to write stuff. And why would you want to do that in the first place? Well, we know that you know human to human interaction on linkedin drives more sales than a company page you know a linkedin page could do any day of the week like it's an order of magnitude of like 10x so obviously that's how jake has done it and grown scaled over the years since 2018 and that's why jake has 70,000 followers now on linkedin is because he's grown it organically over time hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of posts over time and it, all the time you know talking to his core audience talking about sales well if let's say it's 2023 and you want to start that journey, where do you start from? A tool like this can actually help you try to generate more content. So in this particular case, what I could do, and I think I use this for, I literally copied this from Lavender, not that I would obviously repost this, but one of the cool tools that I like is, let's say I had written this post and I just put a little marker in here. There's a little uh, robot down here and it's like AI will try to complete or add to this post. So let's say you had given it two or three sentences. You're like, I don't really know how to wrap this up. This is a cool tool where you're able to add more to your post and it's actually AI assisted content to try to help you get even more uh, content out there. It has a couple of other ones as well, like viral content. So I could look at viral content. Um, I should cancel out of that. There we go, kiss this so it doesn't go live on me. But post imp inspirations, talking about different topics that I may be, so SDRs and things like that. So it, it, it logs in or links to your LinkedIn and it'll pull in new content that other people have done. So about chat GPT or things like that for me. And it'll say, hey, this is what's out there. And that may generate new ideas for me to create new content. So a pretty cool tool. Um, I think it's got a couple pieces that, you know, it's it's got some tweaks that I think could be made to make it even better, but um, it's a pretty cool tool. It's definitely something I think you, sh you should uh, check out, and I think you can even do it for free for a little bit. Okay, with our last two, three minutes here, the last one I want to talk about is, again, something that would be relentlessly helpful. If you're in sales nav, if you're just on the regular side of LinkedIn, a lot of times what we tell people is like, hey, great, do those posts, but also engage with your target audience. That's really, really, really important. Sometimes you don't know what to say. So what you can do is like, let's say I have this post by Roy and he wrote this great post. And I'm like, yeah, I don't, I'm not, I'm not quite sure how I would want to answer that. One of the things you can do is use this, um, this add-on, this extension for Chrome called Merlin. And so I'm just gonna, all the way down to here, I'm just going to copy and then I'm going to control Z to open up Merlin and it says Merlin says and then I'm just going to say, can you write me a uh, comment for this LinkedIn post and then I'm just simply going to paste that in. And here you go. So would I copy and paste this idea? No, I want it to be in my voice. But again, can this take you from zero to 60 miles an hour super, super fast by using a tool like Merlin? Absolutely. Now Merlin is just a uh, uh, Chrome extension. So you can actually even see it show up here on just like if I was to do how to build a winning RevOps team, I could actually just hit search on Merlin and it's gonna give me a chat GPT response here. I don't know if it'll do it live, but it'll give me a chat GPT response here. So here you go, building a winning RevOps team, so on and so forth. So this is as if you were in chat GPT asking this exact same question, except that you're actually getting it in Chrome, you're getting it in Google. Now, I will just wrap this all up to say a lot of the tools I've shown you today, and they're fast and furious, chat GPT has already been um, embedded into Bing and that's rolling out. Chrome has come out with theirs, it's called Bard or Google, I should say, it's called Bard, B-A-R-D. It's a playoff, I think, the, the Shakespeare term of Bard. And so that's their competitor. There's two or three others out there. Most of the stuff very, very quickly in the next two, three months is gonna be directly embedded into your Chrome searches, your Google searches, stuff like that. I don't know how much we're gonna to need tools like a Merlin, but we'll see. You know, we'll see what comes out with them. It's such a fast, fast moving landscape that it could very well be that some of these tools uh, won't be necessary in a month, two months from now. It really depends on what comes out there. But for now, hopefully this is a whole bunch of stuff that you guys can use. 
that you feel is immediately actionable. And again, if you want to see all the different tools, all the stuff I dove into over the last 30 days, you can go check out my LinkedIn um, profile. You can look at the hashtag, a hashtag AI brains and gains. So you can see the whole series if you want in one place. Um, and it's all there for you. And I'm going to continue to post about AI because I think people do need to know more and more about this, especially in sales where everything is moving at a breakneck pace as it is. And really, adopting and learning how to do prompts and getting these answers and making your life more efficient is only going to be uh, better for you. Now, coming up on next week, Jake will be back and Jake's going to be back with on the 20th and the topic that week is or next week is double your ACV with sales and CS alignment. So, Jake will be back. I appreciate uh him allowing me to go ahead um Thanks, Becca. I appreciate uh, him allowing me to uh, take over his feed today. And I think Jake and I are going to do some more stuff in the future together. Um, if you have any questions, concerns, DM me, reach out, connect with me on LinkedIn. Happy to answer any questions for you. Uh, other than that, I will say thanks for uh, letting me hang out with you guys for 30 minutes. I hope this was relentlessly helpful and you got a lot of cool tools that you can know, go play with. Or if you already knew about ChatGPT, now you know how to use it even better. So that's it for me. I will say goodbye and uh, thanks again, guys. Bye.